Boom, all right, what's going on you guys? It's Royce Jacob. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Waves Weekly. Series I post every weekend where we cover recent news and current events that relate to the markets. These episodes are meant to be more chill, so sit back, grab yourself a drink. Right now, I'm personally drinking super coffee with protein and MCT oil. You guys, MCT oil is actually one of the best fats that you can consume for cognitive function. Have thrown some of this into my morning cup of coffee for years now, but saw this on the shelf. I was like, what the heck? It'll be my drink of the week. Let the Waves fam know what I think and it's pretty darn good. So you guys, cheers of the weekend. I hope you all had a fun and safe holiday weekends and uh, let's get into it. Cheers once again. This stuff is pretty good. Solid 8.2 out of 10. I do recommend it. Zero sugar too. It's all monk fruit extract sweetener. Okay, so um, highly recommend it. Let's get into it. As always, we'll go over each topic that we're going to be discussing and then we'll dive into each one individually. Um, only a few articles to go over today, but exciting and important at that this first one we're going to cover big tech reports big tech earnings okay so we did talk about this a little bit on friday but this is the biggest news of last week you guys this is a very pivotal moment for the markets and of course we will go over the big um the big boys amazon apple google and facebook this is a morning brew article you guys short and sweet we'll just go over the highlights from each one again shout out to morning brew um eliza carter great writer recognize her referenced her work a few times and uh morning brew actually just sold okay they made an exit a multi multi-million dollar exit but <clears throat> excuse me the coffee's getting to me been a fan of this newsletter for a long time you guys i do still recommend that you guys check them out if you haven't um, haven't yet i'll link them below but they just had a huge exit they just got acquired so shout out to them um another reason that i'm stoked to cover this article okay uh, moving on from there the second final article again you guys short and sweet today bitcoin reaches 14k for the first time since january of 2018 what's next super exciting you guys woke up this morning saw all the news saw the headlines bitcoin above 14k and uh of course along with this article we do have to take a look at the bitcoin charts because um literally 40 minutes at the time of recording this we just closed the monthly candle for the month of october and we just about tied you guys we're so close i'm not exactly sure because you can see here we're on the monthly right now i just want to get straight into this before we even get into it because it's so exciting we closed the month i mean you can see here these are the two um the two highest monthly closes in Bitcoin's history was during the bull run back in 2017, 2018. And uh, you can see December and January, December 2017, January 2018 were about the same. And we closed almost exactly at the same level, maybe, maybe a few dollars up, uh, below those closes. But regardless, you guys, it's still one of the highest monthly closes in Bitcoin's history. And as we zoom in, which we will, um, you know, right now, and then we'll get back to it later in the video. I mean, Bitcoin just looks so freaking bullish right now. So Bitcoin, um, again, you guys, you guys know what a Bitcoin bull I am right now from both a technical fundamental perspective um, is just looking so good. So we will take a look at Bitcoin's chart along with that article. I'll give you guys my thoughts on that. And then on kind of the same Bitcoin bandwagon, but also trading uh, is the reason I chose this as our content of the week. So this is an interview with uh, Keith McCullough of Hedgeye. I really like that channel. He's a great quant. He's a great trader. Um, and Ralph Paul, I've referenced his work a lot. The founder of Re uh, Real Vision, former gold and Sachs um, hedge fund manager um, and one of the biggest Bitcoin bulls in the space and one of the most, most rational minds in the macroeconomic lands in ma macro investing landscape I should say total so um, again I will talk about this a little more at the end you guys this is a great interview I um, I do ask that you please watch the rest of this video but after or even you I mean it's completely up to you obviously but you guys I do recommend you guys check out this interview whenever you find some time because it's great it's great content and then, of course, I do also have a book for you guys, The Effective Executive uh, by Peter Drucker. This is um, when I was first starting my entrepreneurial career, my trading career, just kind of um getting getting to my own coming to my own um this is a very this is a very sentimental book for me you guys and it did teach me a lot it's a classic um and it just it, even if you're not even if you don't think of yourself as an entrepreneur you don't have a business everyone's the ceo of themselves and that's that's super cheesy to say but it's true you guys um you you are the you are the executive you are the chief executive officer of yourself and uh that's why i do believe this book is solid so i'll link it below i will talk about it at the end as well though so um stay tuned for that and then i'm sure you guys saw it's in the title or like what the heck is that charizard we're talking charizards you guys i have been on a kick lately so um shout out to all of my 90s babies even before that um so many people are passionate about pokemon and the nostalgia has really been coming alive lately and uh i've been i've been diversifying the portfolio you guys know i always preach portfolio diversification so i got a couple charizards here i got one psa um i've been on a little pack opening binge too i'm going to be honest about that and i opened eight packs of the xy i'm not sure i'm not going to bore you guys with the with the details but 
I pulled a freaking Charizard, okay? Me and my lady pulled a Charizard when we, like, eight packs. That's so rare, but so, so pumped, you guys. And we pulled a Charizard. Couldn't be more stoked about that. Got the PSA. And then I also want to talk to you guys about my other favorite dragon, the Blue Eyes White Dragon. I don't know if you guys know Yu-Gi-Oh! But, um, again, you guys, I'll talk about that at the end. I don't want to bore you guys too much. But, again, these are great investments. The price of trading cards, the price of Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh! cards, um, even sports cards, if you guys are into that, are climbing at a rapid pace. And again, you guys, I always preach portfolio diversification, whether it's equities, gold, silver, Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, trading cards, anything, anything to diversify the portfolio, anything to protect your wealth. And that's how, of course, I am going to tie it in. It's both a passion, a hobby and an investment. OK, so I want to talk to you guys about that. And of course, I'm sure you guys saw this bad boy back here. Um, I told you guys. As, as many of you know, my lady does have a TikTok, um, 250K on TikTok, so she's big on there, but I have been encouraging her to make a YouTube channel, joined, um, or at least put more time into what I believe is the obviously elite platform, and she drew this for us, okay? So I'm not going to leave this up the, uh, the entire time, but she drew us this Charizard just having the background for this, and uh, I'm definitely going to hang this up. Again, not in the background of all these videos, but this is going in my, like, my, my room, okay? So um, thank you to the lady. Go check out her video. She just posted the video of her drawing this Charizard for us on her YouTube channel channel so i will link that below go check her out too um give her a like too her birthday is coming up on november 3rd so she'd appreciate that as well go wish her some birthday wishes from the waves fam okay so um let's go hang this bad boy back up you guys can look at it there we go and then let's get into this okay so sorry about the squeaky chair too um Okay, big tech reports big tech earnings. Okay, so um, again, we'll just go down the line here, work our way down. Apple posted strong numbers for its fiscal Q4 that modestly beat expectations, with Macs and AirPods offsetting weaker iPhone sales, but it didn't offer guidance for the next quarter. So again, you guys, not offering guidance is, is something very familiar to us over the course of this pandemic. There's just so much uncertainty out there that it's not surprising that um, even these large players like Apple, Amazon, et cetera, aren't offering guidance. Um, so investors don't know what to expect for the just released iPhone 12. I'm personally getting an iPhone 12 again. Pre-orders are still, there's, there's still pre-orders for the Max and uh, the Mini, I believe, coming up in, in early to mid-November. So uh, that, that will be a big tell as to how many people are actually, are actually throwing down for the new iPhone. The context, Apple has worked on shoring up its software and services, plus its boosted products like AirPods and the Apple Watch. It's hyped Apple One Bundle, which combines several services, launches today. That Apple One Bundle, you guys, I think I talked about that when they first announced it at their event not too long ago is a huge deal you guys that apple one bundle apple is becoming kind of like the skynet you guys know like uh it, it, not it's not avenger it's not marvel movies i can't remember which one which one skynet's in but you guys know just the skynet like the over the all-encompassing brand that, that targets every aspect of, of humanity that's what apple is becoming okay they're, they're going for your health they're going for obviously tech they're consumer facing product they're consumer facing product goods they're a tech company they're but they're entering into health and they're entering into so many of these other spaces entertainment media um they are becoming the Skynet, okay? And uh, it's it's awesome. And again, I'm a huge fan of Apple. And I think this Apple One bundle is is so brilliant, you guys. It's news, it's, it's music, it's TV, it's everything. So that's a great idea. Obviously the Apple AirPods are like one of the greatest inventions. <laughs> I mean, greatest hardware inventions. Um, of the last decade, probably. I freaking love AirPods. Apple Watch Fire as well. Um, so Apple, again, it might be overvalued just because there's so much economic uncertainty right now and people are, consumption is actually on on the way down because without fiscal stimulus we are going to be scratching for dollars more but still long-term bullish um but again you guys have to keep in mind the markets are very very inflated still even at these levels right now amazon made expectations wish they were never born sales increased by 37 percent yearly to 96 billion dollars and profits jumped almost 200 percent good news and that doesn't even include prime day and amazon has been spending big on its warehouses and delivery infrastructure the context of pandemic has boosted amazon's e-commerce business but its advertising cloud computing segments are in fine form too so again you guys this pandemic just was like the best thing that could happen from every angle for amazon um so amazon's cloud amazon cloud runs uh, surprising amount if you guys aren't familiar with their cloud services aws um they're pretty much like they run a, a good majority of the internet of bandwidth on the internet like their their servers serve the majority of the internet so that they're obviously good there because people are using way more data way more internet and obviously people are using way more amazon amazon.com e-commerce is it has been has i mean 
the the trend for e-commerce over brick and mortar was already obviously trending towards e-commerce but this pandemic just expedited that process like it did so many things like everything is trending digital you guys that's the argument i always make for bitcoin as well everything is trending digital at even more of a rapid pace than it was prior to this pandemic so all the stars are aligning for for things like amazon and bitcoin Google, Google crushed earnings. And uh, same thing applies here, you guys. Everything is trending digital. Google parent Alphabet also reported blowout earnings with profits at 11.2 billion and revenue at 46 billion last quarter. The context, it looks like Google recovered from its first ever revenue dip in Q2, but astronomical advertising revenue doesn't exactly bode well for its fight against the DOG's anti DOJ's antitrust allegations. So again, uh, Google does have those antitrust allegations against them right now. That is putting um, a lot of pressure on them just from, uh, just again, from a, from a well-being, just just optics standpoint, um, to the general public, uh, I think Apple Apple did announce, in fact, that they might be launching a search engine too. I don't know when and if for a fact that's coming. They did announce it though. They said they're definitely thinking about it, and uh, they are attacking you guys again. Apple is trying to become the all-encompassing brand, targeting every aspect of the entire market. And uh, I mean, if they start a search engine, then Google should be worried. But um, I mean, ad revenue up. I'd like to see a little more of that ad revenue, please, YouTube. Um, I can't, I, I mean, I love the platform. I, at revenue or not, it's uh, still love this as a platform. I'm just, I'm just joking, you guys. Lastly, Facebook beat expectations on both revenue, 21.5 billion in daily active users, 1.8 plus billion up 12% yearly. The context, optics wise, Facebook is at a tough 2020 for sure, with magnified scrutiny over its handling of political content and advertising. But numbers wise, it's done well. Last quarter, it officially reached 3 billion monthly users across Facebook. That's that's crazy. That's like that's over a third of the year. That's almost a half of the entire planet is on Facebook. That's insane. Earnings season ain't over yet. But for those plus Microsoft account for 46% of the NASDAQ 100, the predominance in the stock market, plus the growing criticism over their market power means they're watched magnifier closely. So again, you guys, all the antitrust, all these big, the big four right here that we, we just talked about, plus Microsoft. Primarily, these guys, though, are, are pretty heavily under the eyes of, of the antitrust. Google is the most recent victim of that. But again, you guys, the bigger companies get, the more monopolizing these companies get, which is, again, these are highly highly competent companies the ceos are killing it you guys and they're uh, you can't blame them this is capitalism you guys this is ca the reason these companies are big is because they're solving a lot of problems at, at a very efficient um scale and they're very competent in what they do so it makes sense that they're the biggest companies in the world okay um but regardless tying this back into the stock market we did close out the week uh equities closed out the week i should say on a very very weak note worst week since march so as you guys know i am short equities i, I did make that video i just posted called short stocks long bitcoin and uh, again, I think that these, uh, I think that the players we're looking at right here, I think that they could correct. But as money flows out of the, and again, I'm long-term bullish on all these players. I think they all have bright futures ahead of them, even though they're so freaking high already. Um, I do think these will correct personally. I think that's that will happen. Um, but I do think that money will flow out of this sector into smaller, more promising sectors and more promising assets like Bitcoin. So let's talk some Bitcoin. Let's get to, we all want to talk about this, right? Bitcoin reaches 14K for the first time since January of 2018. What's next? The price of Bitcoin is on the verge of having its highest monthly close ever, but bulls might still break through 14 k for a shot at a new all-time high I, I love this graphic you guys coin telegraph shout out coin telegraph michael van de pop <clears throat> they always make great graphics so shout out to them for this Bitcoin price is undoubtedly having an impressive year after crashing to 3700 in March, but then rallying to 14000 in the following months. Now BTC has reached the highest point since January of 2018 as the price touched $14,100. Thus, the likelihood of the new bull cycle is heavily increasing as the price of Bitcoin continues to make higher highs and higher lows. What's more, the strength is, is even seen while the US dollar currency index, which is typically inversely correlated, which means that they go opposite ways, okay? I always say this. If the dollar is going up, it usually means asset like assets like Bitcoin Bitcoin, gold and equities will go down but right now the dollar is going up and bitcoin is going up while equities are falling and that makes me very very bullish on bitcoin the fact that it is breaking correlation to everything it's be, again it's becoming it's acting as an asset class of its own which everyone who actually understands bitcoin knows that that's how it should act okay okay uh and is also recovering uh amid coronavirus fears again there's so much uncertainty and it's, it's just so it baffles me that a high risk asset like bitcoin is performing so well right now but again that just shows you how many people are realizing the true fundamental potential and and the purpose it will serve in um in the future of our financial markets so i'll zoom in on this right here finish it off with that and then we'll go into the charts 
Um, so this is still a little small, you guys, sorry about that. But anyway, this is pretty much just saying after 14K, there's not a lot of resistance up until 17K. And you guys, I will show you guys, uh, many of you know that 17K is my pretty, a fairly short-term price target that I have. I think that we could very well go pretty parabolic. So like 90 degrees, not quite. You guys know it's never 90 degrees, but I think we could hit 17K pretty fast. I'm not promising anything, you guys remember that, but 17K is my target. Uh, that is the line they have drawn here. I'm sorry, sorry, it's so... Can I, I can't zoom into that. But anyway, you guys can see here. We'll take a look at the charts right now. Um, 17K. Yeah, you know what? Let's We'll zoom out. We'll zoom out here quick and then zoom back in. I just hate having to scroll like this because it looks so wild. So you guys can see here from, from 14K where we're at about right now to 17K where there's these other candles right here. You know, it's like 16, 5, 17. Um, <clears throat> there's not much going on you guys like there's not much resist there's not a historic ceiling in that area so from a technical perspective it should be a fairly clear shot to this to the 16 5 17 thousand dollar region and it also coincides with my recent tops and again you guys once it does hit the 17k area i do expect it to pull back for a little bit i think we will see a correction around 17k prior to making a run out to like 25 excuse me 30k after that Okay, so let's zoom into this chart on the four hour. Um, again, sorry, you guys. Okay, so here you can see Bitcoin is, is just looking so strong. Higher highs, higher lows. Um, TA101, that is good news right there. That's what you want to see. Higher highs, higher lows. We're forming like a little bull flag here right now that you guys can see on the on the four hour. Um, you can see that yeah, that would even look even better on like the on like the hourly or something. But looking strong, higher highs, higher lows. That's all you want to see. It's in a very healthy uptrend up. It's not going, It's it's Bitcoin has been appreciating value every day for the most part, but it's not, it's not like crazy. We're not seeing that, that crazy 90 degree move up yet, but you guys, it's just, it's looking promising already. Bitcoin is at a strong, if you, here, I'm gonna move my fat head quick. You guys can see here, I don't put a whole lot of weight on this, but you guys, TradingView is the site we're working on and I, I have to, I, I trust that their algorithms are pretty solid, their TA algorithms. Um, and it's rare that you see strong buy and it feels so good just to see a strong, again, I don't put a whole lot of weight on this personally, but, it feels so good to see a strong buy on trading views technical um, technical meter so that's good as well um, i will again you guys of course i'll keep you guys posted on my thoughts on bitcoin as we move into the trading week going into monday tuesday i'm super excited to see what happens to stocks like riot marathon they got beaten down last week so it will be nice to see if people wake up if people actually realize that these stocks are kind of manipulated but the fundamentals are stronger than ever okay like these guys these guys are paying Bitcoin. They have Bitcoin on their balance sheets. So it, it only makes sense that these stocks would go up with Bitcoin. So super excited to see what happens with them. MicroStrategy, so many of these other cool Bitcoin related stocks. And uh, again, you guys, Bitcoin, my shorter term price target, my short to medium term price target, I should say, is $17,000, after which point I think we will um, see a pullback for a little bit and then ultimately go on to see a, a nice Christmas rally in Bitcoin. I think by Christmas, you guys, we could see a, a $20,000 Bitcoin. And then going into 2021, I think it's all, I, I, I mean, I think 2021 is when we actually start to go parabolic in Bitcoin, okay? Um, but you guys know that I'm bullish on Bitcoin. We'll kind of we'll call the Bitcoin talk there. Let's talk about this one more time. So again, Rao Paul, founder of Real Vision Finance, one of the I would consider him to be my primary mentor um, in the macro investing landscape. And I do pride myself as a macro investor. You guys, I always preach that. Um, Again, trading day trading is fine. Trading specific sectors is fine if that's what you're into. But I think it's way funner and way more beneficial long term to understand the macroeconomic environment. Understand everything that's going on because everything everything operates. The entire financial markets operate in one big ecosystem. Although everything doesn't seem directly correlated, everything is is tied to each other in some in some sense. Okay, so that's why it's very important to understand what's going on in the macro environment. This guy is so good at that. His his platform Real Vision. It's a YouTube channel. Go check that out if you haven't yet. Rec recommended that many times as well great content over there too you guys and a uh, keith mccullough hedge the opposite of ralph paul so ralph paul um again he's been he's been evangelizing bitcoin he's he's been he pretty much called this entire crisis so this dude knows what he's talking about and uh keith mccullough is, is a great trader he's a very uh well-renowned trader uh like typical wall street suit guy but super good sense of humor i really i like i'll, I'll sit down and have a beer with this dude for sure um very competent very good at what he does he's not a macro a macro trader by any means um he is a trader so he he is like heavy into technicals and that's why like like you guys know we we always look at technicals right but you guys know i always say that i prioritize fundamentals over technicals because fundamentals will ultimately um like it everything needs that fundamental catalyst for technicals to ultimately become engaged in 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 like in a positive way if you if you guys get what i'm saying there but it's just great to see two people two very competent investors on opposite sides of the spectrum talking and just like what 
like two dudes I respect, two very like two investors who again who are good at their respective um trading styles talking and having like a great conversation so once again i do highly recommend you guys go check this out Raul paul pro to pro a macro investing masterclass hedge eye investing summit on the hedge eye youtube channel throw it a like um but again highly recommend this um effective executive and then we'll talk some we'll talk some pokemon cards okay so effective executive peter drucker this again you guys when i was first getting into um just trying to find my feet as as an entrepreneur i've been i've been doing entrepreneurial things like since i can say confidently since i was like 16 years old things started getting serious when i was like 19 20 years old and then finally i finally consider myself a true entrepreneur around probably like 22 23 and then now i'm i'm, I'm 100 like a, that's what i do okay and that book was one i read early on so it is definitely more self-helpy it's not super quantitative it's more just uh, like framework for for thought and how to approach things from a mental perspective um, but again you guys trading trading is such a psychological game that you need to have your psyche in order and uh, like the way the way you view things and the way you perceive things um, isn't, isn't only good for mental health outside of trading but again it gives you that edge in trading because trading you need to be rational you need to view things from from an, uh, an objective lens and that's why it's good to think about yourself as as an executive, as someone who's operating a business. Again, even if you're not, if you don't consider yourself an entrepreneur, understand that you are um, you are the executive of you. Okay, you are ultimately responsible for the performance of what you do and your own again the way you perform as an individual. Okay, and whatever ventures you're taking on. And trading is uh, if you guys are trying to trade, that's an entrepreneurial endeavor. That's a side hustle um, at the very least. So again, you guys take pride in that. I will link that below too if you guys are interested. Great book, great read, pretty easy read too. It's not super long and um, extensive. So check that out. Um, and I think that's content, guys. Uh, we'll talk about talk about some pokemon cards so i just want to show you guys these again pokemon cards is uh is it's just something i've really picked up so i was into pokemon played the video game so much as a kid played the trading cards as a kid i actually have a really nice collection kind of like uh, there's a little desk right here you guys can't see it but I have a whole bunch of cards there that i'm getting ready to send into psa and uh the main reason i want to talk about this is honestly just because i feel like some of you are are involved either involved in this or getting involved in this space and uh Waves fam, let me know if you are, because I, I would love to talk to you guys about this. Just geek out about it with you. So, um, Blue Eyes, White Dragon, you guys, I freaking love this card right here, the Blue Eyes. Yu-Gi-Oh was such a... <clears throat> I mean, Yu-Gi-Oh was a large... I was actually more into Yu-Gi-Oh than Pokemon. I collect... I have almost equal amounts of cards in both, but as far as like an actual game, I was more into Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, so, Blue Eyes, White Dragon, I mean, you guys, these two dragons right here... These two dragons right here like define my childhood. So love these dragons. I'm super proud of these cards. And again, you guys, it's it's just it, it's a way to diversify your portfolio in a fun, nostalgic way. And that's so much of what investing is about too. You guys like have fun, enjoy life. Like obviously, like it was it maybe like when I got these in, these two. So I spent just for the example, I bought this about three weeks ago now for about. $650. I got this for $650. This is now worth, I think I've, I saw one sell for like around 1200. So it's already two X and, and keep in mind, you guys, Pokemon is seeing such a, almost like a bubble right now that I, those prices probably aren't stable, but Pokemon cards, you guys, it's wake like this movement is waking up the nostalgia in so many people and Pokemon is the largest franchise in the world. So I feel very safe holding on to this. I do. I would way rather have this than a few hundred dollar bills in cash. And uh, I know that this will appreciate, ultimately appreciate over time, okay? So like Bitcoin, like scarce assets, Pokemon cards, Yu-Gi-Oh cards that are graded, that are in great shape. Um, again, PSA, that's where you can see this red label at the top. If you guys aren't familiar, that is a professional grading system that um, investors and traders of, of um, cards use to dictate the value and, um, and, and the state um, of their cards. So, I mean, you guys, super fun to talk about. Let me know if you guys want me to make a video specifically about that. I highly doubt it, um, but I would like to. But if, if anything, just let me know down in the comments below if if you guys are getting into it, if you're interested. There's a, gr a lot of great YouTube channels out there. PokeRev is one of my favorites. Shout out to PokeRev. Go check him out um, if you want to check out a fun YouTube channel. And uh, again, you guys, it's just it's about diversification. It's about fun, and it's about... Um, just enjoying what you do and just doing whatever you can to um, make whatever you're doing more enjoyable because that that translates to longevity like you're never going to be good 
good at what you do and good for a long time if you're not enjoying what you're doing. So make sure you're happy, make sure you're having fun. And uh, I think that's what we'll close it out with. So I appreciate you guys again. Talk to you downstairs. As always, you guys check out the complete portfolio daily news. If you're not signed up yet, what are you doing? Um, but greatly appreciate it if you do guys, it truly does mean a lot. Um, first link in the description there too. And uh, again, look forward to talking to you guys downstairs until next time. Always remember, take action, make waves. Peace.